Hi, I'm James, and today I'm looking at something a little bit different, and that is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 G1 gaming graphics card. Um, I'm quite excited about this day because this is actually a personal upgrade um, for my main system, uh, and I've chosen this to replace my aging um, GeForce GTX 680 2GB card. So we're going to the latest generation NVIDIA Pascal architecture and up to 8GB of memory which for me is going to give a big boost in a lot of the games where I'm running where being limited to 2GB of memory is quite a problem when I'm playing on a 2560x1600 monitor. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. So this G1 gaming card is sort of the mid-range of the Gigabyte lineup. We have um, increased clock speeds um, up to I think it's 1594 MHz base and 1784 MHz uh, boost clock in normal mode for this card and if we put it into the OC mode with the, um, the Gigabyte software for it that takes us up to 1620 boost, uh, sorry, base and um, 1822 boost so you're getting, I believe it's about 150 megahertz boost or almost 10% increase um, when you're in OC mode, um, which gets you towards sort of 50% of the way between sort of the standard GTX 1070 and the higher spec 1080 card. So first of all, looking in here, we have this little pouch and this contains a few bits and pieces so we've got our quick setup guide which goes through how to get this in different display connector types we also have our driver CD which we will absolutely not be using we'll download the latest ones from the Gigabyte website or actually from the Nvidia website I should say we then have the card itself now because this is the G1 gaming card, we have a custom cooler on it, and this kind of sits between the Windforce and I believe it is the Extreme Gaming cards, um, so it has this 3 fan custom cooler, um, and the higher clocks but not as high as the Extreme Gaming one. Um, the So taking a look at the card itself, we have the 3 fans, they have this sort of ribbing on the fan blades which is supposed to help focus airflow. We have the light up gigabyte logo and the thing show when the fan is stopping on here. We have an 8 pin power connector, uh, just the one of those, but you do need 8 pin, not 6. And then we have a back plate on the card itself. Now, looking at the back, you can see we have a single DVID output, one HDMI, and three display ports. Uh, I'm going to be using this with three monitors, however all three are actually DVI. Um, I have an HDMI adapter to DVI for one of them already, and then I'll be using a DisplayPort to DVI adapter as well. Um, you know, aesthetically it's quite a nice looking card, my case isn't actually windowed, so that doesn't have a huge bearing sort of on my thoughts of it. It also ships with a few bits, like we've got covers on the PCI Express connector, and various other pieces just to keep it all protected. And then in the bottom of the box here, I assume, yeah, we just have padding. That's everything in the box. Now comparing the Gigabyte uh, GTX 1070 G1 Gaming side by side with my old reference design GeForce GTX 680 card, we can see that there is about an, an inch of extra length on the GTX 1070 and that it uses, as we said, the uh, the 8 pin connector as opposed to a pair of 6 pins. If your current power supply has two 6 pin connectors, you can get adapters that convert those two into a single 8 pin block, uh, but that doesn't come with the card, you have to get that separately. I believe also the extra length is a standard thing for the reference design card as well, it's just a longer card than the GTX 680 and that 8-pin connector is the same whether you get a reference blower design card or one of the uh, overclocked cards. 
To control some of the other features with this card as well, we have the Gigabyte Extreme Gaming software. Uh, this has the option for sort of customized overclocks here where we have the profile. We also have the advanced OC option where the easy settings let us move between the standard overclocked mode, the full um, higher speed OC mode and the eco mode which runs it at the same base clocks as the regular cards. We also have some advanced settings where we can apply um, different settings so we can apply um, either different curves or fixed clock offsets and various bits and pieces such as that. Because I'm not I'm going to be overclocking this card I'm simply going to use the gaming mode and OC modes depending on what I'm doing. And we have options here as well where you can manually control the fan, set it to be more aggressive uh, or set it to run flat out say if we were overclocking or doing some uh, benchmarking where we want to ensure maximum cooling we can create custom profiles for the cooling so we can see here on the auto one it keeps the fan completely off until it's at 50 percent uh, that manual setting there is actually just loading the auto profile until we customize it but there are options to allow it to be quieter or more aggressive with the cooling and we also have the led um, so we can set these to flash the uh, the lights on the top of the card or do different actions with them as we go through different modes. So here we're just cycling through a few of the different options and seeing the effect it has. Uh, the fan stop LED is constantly or is always showing on this because as you can see in the video the fans aren't moving. If we put the card under load um, then that light will go out when the fans are running and gives you a visual indicator of when they are running when you can't see them but if say you have a window in the case you can't see the fan blades but you can see the top and this is just quite a nice little I suppose a gimmick but it is a nice touch for people who care about the aesthetics of their machine just as much as the actual performance. I have also included a quick sample of the GTA 5 uh, benchmark just running on this card. Unfortunately performance is actually limited a bit by the fact um, I had this hooked up on an old Core i7-970 system. Uh, this isn't really an ideal kind of graphics card uh, kind of processor to be pairing up with this card. Um, but even so we can see you know, uh, on this benchmark with the details absolutely maxed at 1080p. Um, even then we are seeing frame rates generally well above 60 frames a second um, which you know is very good um, obviously we would see a bit better performance and I do see better performance than this um, with my actual main gaming system it was simply that because that also runs my video captures when I do these I had to put it into an older platform so overall first impressions with the card I've been really pleased um, I'll put a link to it on Amazon below I th feel for sort of the overclocked uh, or super clocked uh, GTX 1070 it was actually a pretty reasonable price on this it was a little bit over 400 pound and um, so you're not paying a massive premium over the sort of reference design cards which tend to come in around about 380 you're getting about a 10 percent performance boost over those cards which kind of brings you halfway between the standard 1070s and the much more expensive uh, GTX 1080 cards so yeah um I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the other video on our channels. We tend to focus on sort of lower end gaming, but if you have a laptop and want to know if these games that you play on your desktop machine can also run on those, I recommend taking a look and letting us know what you'd like to see from us in the future. Thanks for watching.